Think you're special, one of a kind? We agree. The way you pursue your digital ambitions is unique to you. And so is your appetite for digital risk. Whether you're hyper-connecting your ecosystem, empowering a distributed workforce, rapidly leveraging cloud, IoT, AI, or other new technologies, RSA is here to help you manage digital risk your way at every stage of your journey. So go ahead. Be you. Hello, and welcome to Drone Penetration Testing and Vulnerability Analysis Framework. If you're joining us live, our speaker is in the Slido chat discussion area answering your questions right now. For audio or video issues, click the technical support button below. I'd now like to turn it over to Dr. Vivek Balanchandran for the presentation. Thank you, Britta. Hi, my name is Vivek Balachandran. I'm an assistant professor in Singapore Institute of Technology. Today, we will look into our recent work on drone penetration testing and vulnerability analysis framework. At the launch of RIE 2020 plan in Singapore, announcements were made regarding the future in four technology domains. In the service and digital economy domain, one of the three focus areas is urban mobility. Urban mobility aims to fuse traditional transport engineering with autonomous technologies, real-time analytics, modeling, and simulation to transform how we plan routes and dynamically manage real-time traffic events. Although autonomous unmanned technologies have the potential to radically transform our economy and improve our livelihood, the inherent vulnerabilities, both known and unknown, impose significant challenges to their deployment. The two main challenges to drone deployment include in integrating drones safely into the airspace, as well as secure and reliable unmanned flight management technology to support flights and operations beyond line of sight. In April 2015, had approved the unmanned aircraft, uh, which aims to regulate the use of drones with a clear set of rules. Drones, however, have a communications and control network based on Wi-Fi or radio frequency. Many also use, utilize existing IT-based operating systems. They are therefore affected by vulnerabilities that could give attackers full root access to the device platform, read and delete files, or crash the device. At the operations level, Integrating an unmanned digitally controlled drone safely into the airspace will require a clear awareness and understanding of the existing and potential vulnerabilities in its control system, as well as its communication channels. Counter drone signal jammers are popular, but risky to deploy due to, due to the interference with air, air, aircraft communications or law enforcement channels. Drone manufacturers, manufacturers and retailers may be unaware or unaware of or even unwilling to divulge product risks or dangers. Hence, comprehensive vulnerability maps independently computed for specific drones would help considerably to enable selective and secure operational. In February 2017, you assert one of vulnerabilities found in surveillance drones manufactured by drone which is a hard-coded password and an authentication bypass. Similarly, the announcement, the announcement, came, announcement came comes weeks after it was revealed that the U.S. Army, uh, sorry, uh, uh, okay, D DGA, a Chinese drone manufacturer, launched a bug bounty program offering researchers as much as $30,000 for spotting cyber vulnerabilities in its drones. Interestingly, this announcement came Weeks after it was revealed that the U.S. Army barred the use of DJ drones over cybersecurity concerns. The same goes with DJ Phantom. DJ Phantom 3, professional drone, the DJ apps maintains a database of uh, no-fly zones. On iOS device, this is dot fly safe places to DB. The drone, however, may be attacked by GPS spoofing and made to land in a no-fly zone. Also, you can use Wi-Fi attacks against Parrot AR using AirPlay, 
So AirPlay NG is a popular attack tool, dictionary-based attack tool for VPA2 passwords in the normal computer world. You can deploy the same thing for the uh, Parrot AR drones, mostly because it uses a Wi-Fi-based communication method between the drone and the controller, thus deauthenticating the user. So one of the reasons why our solution is needed is that there is no centralized framework for drone penetration testing. There are independent works that exist in the literature, but mostly these are academic pursuits and in forum discussions where there are independent uh, cybersecurity enthusiasts who find attacks, vulnerabilities, and exploits against specific drones. A few companies are coming up with some framework these days, but still it is a new area uh, which is unexplored. So our goal is to have an open source platform for drone attacks. Why open source? Because open source is the best method to have all the different attacks from all over the world by all the cybersecurity enthusiasts to put in their works in one centralized platform, which is easy to launch uh, new attacks of, for different types of drones for a cybersecurity specialist and for a, a security specialist who is not uh, specialized in drone security. And for uh, specialized cybersecurity professionals, it should be easy to add new attack modules. And it should have both a local and a server database. A local database because once you download the entire tool, you need not need to depend on the internet connectivity or the, or the server connectivity for the attack to be launched a server database for everyone to contribute their own attacks. So we named this framework as DR80 or drone attack tool, and it is developed in Kali Linux as a penetration testing tool and a vulnerability analysis tool for drones. It has a local database, as I said earlier, with a search function and report creation feature. A search function is simply because you, if you want to find if a specific drone and a specific attack for this drone exists, you can search it among all the different uh, attacks in the database. There are two modes for this particular framework, a user mode and admin mode. The user mode helps you launch existing attacks from the database and create a report automatically for you. Admin mode is mostly for the professionals to add new attacks. So when you have a new attacks, new attack for a specific drone, you create the script for that, uh, and then call the script from within this uh, framework. So there is a method to add the script onto the framework in the admin mode. So this is how it looks in general. You can see that uh, there are different types of uh, you know, connectivity uh, between a drone and the uh, controller. It will be mostly Wi-Fi based, and there'll be some RF based connectivity as well. There are different protocols used, uh, like uh, OkuSync, you know, uh, Mavilink, etc. Uh, but basically, there is a controller and a drone, and there's a connectivity protocol between them. And we launch different types of attacks using the same uh, mode of communication used between the controller and the, the drone. So in this left side of the slide, you can see uh, our drone uh, DR80 in action. A specific action against Hubson drones is launched. And uh, when the attack is launched, uh, you can see uh, the script is running in the background uh, on this terminal. You can disable that as well if you don't want to see what's happening behind. And at the end of it, it will pop up asking you a uh, uh, question, do you want a report based on the attack? and it will give you the report. And at the same time, disable the drone if the drone is susceptible to that vulnerability. So the control flow diagram of DRAT looked like this. There are two different modes, a user mode and an admin mode, as we dis uh, discussed earlier. The user can select which mode he wants the platform to work. And uh, once they have selected, it will go into that mode. In the user mode, there are three different uh, routes that the user can take. Number one, which is about uh, the user attacks. So there's a, it's mostly an informative page where it helps you understand what this drone is about, who developed 
this drone what are the what is the licensing of this drone uh, attack uh, framework and uh, how to use this how to install the readme file etc can be found in the user mode uh, and then uh, the other two modes are basically attacks so you can select the drone attacks you can go into the available drones that is available on the database so right now we have like four to five drones that you can launch the attack against we hope uh, once we launch this and once the open source community start contributing it you know, blows up and it will show all the available drones and once you select the available drone the next thing that will be asked to the user is which connectivity to be used do you want to attack it on wifi do you want to attack it over rf do you have any other uh, mode of connectivity do you, do you have some information like get uh, uh, regarding the connectivity do you know the mac address do you know uh, the username and password so the more information that you give the more easier the attack will be so if you know the username and password the number of attacks that is available for you will be way more than if you don't know the username and attack um, uh, password for the uh, for the drone connectivity once you give the connectivity options then it gives all the attacks that is available uh, you know with the information that you gave and you could just click the attack that you want and launch the attack and the attack will execute at the end of the attack it will give a prompt back to the user saying that the attack is finished it is either successful or unsuccessful and a report is generated you can go and look for the report in the report menu that comes to the third option which is the report generation uh, report uh, uh, report mode where the user goes to the reports and search for this particular report that uh, is generated and export that into a csv and end of process admin mode is a bit little different uh, a bit different it has two different modes which is manage drones and manage attacks this is basically because sometimes when you create a new attack uh, there may not be any single attack against that drone and that drone may not even be in our framework in this case you may need to add that new particular type of drone onto the uh, you know the framework so when you don't see so if you want to add a specific attack against a specific drone you can look for that drone and if it is not there it add that drone right once you add that drone as an option into the draft framework then you can add different attacks against that drone right similarly you can remove drones from the attack framework so you see that you know certain attacks are not any more valid you don't want to lose your data, local data database space so you can delete all those un, un, unwanted drones from your local database it's, it's the same goes with attacks you can add specific attacks you can add attacks which are generic to all drones you can add specific attacks which are specific to specific drone you can remove all attacks you can remove attack which are specific to specific drones okay now let us briefly look into what are the different types of attacks that we have already have in this framework so mainly three different types of drones are uh, you know uh, aimed at targeted at uh, which are telo dj telo drones hubson uh, drones and dj mavic pro and mavic enterprise so all the attacks that is launched against mavic enterprise works on mavic pro mavic pro 2 as well so uh, let us look into each specifically and go through each of that one by one the telo attacks basically means attacks against dga telo drone so telo has an open udp port or 9999 for communication so we send junk packets to port to disturb the live, live video feed at least for 4 seconds and more hence intermittent video or frozen uh, video will happen this means that uh, you know you can completely freeze uh, uh, the drone controller's video and the the video is completely disturbed and uh, no one can see what's happening and the drone will be disabled to do this you need to know the drone's ip address the second attack on drones telo drones is wifi wifi wp2 password crack this is very similar to our password crack attack that we launch against any any wifi based system this is the reason why this works on telo is that telo works over the normal wifi protocol and we can launch a dictionary attack using air crack energy 
So the attack is very similar to the normal uh, at the Wi-Fi password crack attack using AirCrack NG. Just that you have to cater it, fine tune it for the drone's uh, hardware. The third attack against DJTLO is DOS or denial of service. What happens here is we disrupt the command from the controller and we deauthenticate the controller. So the controller completely loses control over the drone. The drone will still be flying or whatever it is doing. And the behavior of the drone is erratic after that. We cannot uh, predict what the drone will do after that because the controller completely loses control over the drone. The last one, which is an uh, effective uh, attack, is a line of sight attack. It is similar to video disruption attack, but not as uh, dangerous as video disruption. In this case, we disrupt the video transmission but the con by ARP by ARP poisoning, but the controller still has control over the drone. The only thing is that the controller cannot see uh, anything from the camera. The live stream from the camera is completely disturbed. So uh, the controller still have control, but he have to use his uh, you know, line of sight to bring the drone back to wherever the drone started. So this makes his life a bit harder because uh, if the drone is a bit further away, he has no idea what the drone is trying to see. So in the case, you know, it can be used in different ways. For instance, if you are looking at a drone that is uh, invading uh, into your territory, you uh, disturb the line of sight and see what the controller uh, of the drone is trying to make the drone do. Is it trying to bring it back home? And you no, know, so you can follow the drone without the controller knowing that you are following the drone. Hubson uh, uh, attacks are a bit more sophisticated than DJ Tello attack. Simply be because DJ Tello was one of the most, uh, one of the easiest that uh, we encountered among the different drones. The security mechanisms were a bit more uh, relaxed in DJ Tello uh, compared to Hubson or Mavic Pro or Enterprise. The Hubson attack, uh, the same attack that we created for Tello for Wi-Fi WPA attack works in Hubson attack as well. So the same attack, the same script works for Hubsen. Uh, it's exactly the same. Uh, and then the second attack that we have launched against Hubsen is authentication flooding. So we use Mac spoofing, uh, and the tool has the same Mac as a client controller. We make sure that the tool has the same Mac, Mac address. And uh, this enables uh, multiple connections to the drone. And now, is, instead of uh, uh, the drone connecting from the controller, I can flood connection request from a system using different programs within my system. And authentication flooding will bring down the drone and disconnecting the controller from the drone. The last one, which is a flagship as of now, is Mavic Enterprise Pro or Mavic Pro 2, where we have a few attacks uh, that we have created, GPS spoofing, firmware modification, uh, DJ app reverse engineering. GPS spoofing is, uh, <coughs> you need a uh, hardware for GPS spoofing along with the, you know, uh, uh, with the draft framework. So this information will be given when you open the draft framework, that particular tele, you know, the particular attack. So the attack will say for this attack to work, you may need to connect HackRF in this format. So it will be giving some instruction how, the, how to launch this attack when you need extra hardware. So what we did was we used HackRF hardware to spoof the GPS coordinate, which transmitted, which is transmitted with the GPS STS SIM. So every country has their own no-fly zones. But in Singapore, there are spe specific areas which are which are no-fly zones, like uh, the Changi Airport. You cannot fly anything near the Changi Airport. There are specific military establishments. Uh, you cannot fly anything near that. There are specific areas where you cannot fly. So what we can do is to change or the spoof the GPS coordinates as one of the no-fly zone areas. And immediately once you do this, uh, the civilian, uh, you know, the G civilian GPS is um, uh, works something similar to Wi-Fi. Whichever the stronger kind of signal, it takes the strong, stronger signal. So our GPS signal will be the stronger because that is closest to the drone. So the drone will think that oh, instead of flying in a fly zone, which it is, all of a sudden, it is an off-fly zone. And the drone's automatic landing procedure comes in, kicks in, and it lands. 
Another attack that we have launched against Mavic Enterprise is uh, based on firmware modification. So we change the firmware modification by changing the configuration values. We can tweak the configuration values. So when the drone is flying, we can change the co configuration values of say brake sensitivity from 0.6 to 0.2. So all of a sudden you expect the drone to stop at a certain speed and it is going, it is not stopping and it'll go and hit something on the left side or right side. So we can change different configuration values to make uh, the drone behave erratically. We can discuss more on this on this Slido. Uh, I'll be available on Slido right now. So if you have other questions, please feel free to uh, throw questions at me. Finally, what we did was uh, looking at the security of the Android application which DJ provides. So Android, so DJ, DJ Mavic Pro in itself looks like a very strong, uh, you know, uh, security uh, concerned development, but the app is not. I mean, at least for us. So we we managed to bypass the authentication uh, mechanism in the DJ app, which means you can log in offline. We don't need uh, you know the username and password to connect to the drone from the app. We change the app, so we reverse engineer the app, change the you know uh, the code which looks for authentication. And now the the repackaged application can connect to any drone, not just supported drones on the app. It allow unsupported drones as well, and you don't need authentication mechanism to connect. We removed some functions like uh, online function, updating the firmware, update folds. These things were removed so that we can work with uh, the old firmware uh, in the drone. So we don't need uh, firmware updates. So sometimes it says you cannot. Dry, run the drone without updating the firmware. That doesn't happen to us because we have changed that option. So these are some of the attacks that we have in Mavic Enterprise and Pro. More to come. There are uh, a few engineers and a few of my students and myself working on a few other drones. Uh, right now we are working on a DJ Mavic Mini, DJ Phantom, a core drone on different attacks like GPS jamming, replay attack, mm -hmm. uh, GPS spoofing with router smartphone, sniffing the USB traffic between the RC and the mobile phone. So the remote controller and the mobile phone, it's a funny part because uh, one, most of the drones uh, comes with the controller. And because mobile phones is an integral part of all of our lives nowadays, they give an option to connect your mobile phone to the controller and use an application on your mobile phone to control uh, the controller, right? It is completely not needed if you just want to control the drone. But most drones have this. But this opens up a new area to attack, which is uh, a flawed phone. You know, what if there is a malicious program that is running on the phone along with the DJ app? Then can we take control of the drone? So that is what we are working on. We are sniffing this USB traffic between the controller and uh, mobile phone to see what kind of attacks that we can launch there. And finally, we are also doing an attack on video streaming protocol called RTSP protocol. So that is our uh, current work. Uh, more work will be added to it soon. So what can you get from this? I mean, I said what we did, you know, what we have, blah, blah, blah. But you know, I'm sure that you are not, inter you know, a as intriguing as it is, you want to know when you can have a hands on this thing. Soon, very soon. Uh, this is a project which we are, which is funded by our university and a few organizations which include a government entity as well. And uh, we need their, we need to need the permission to release it as open source uh, to the public. Uh, we have uh, in principle permission from them. They, you know, the, 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 uh, the IP rights belong to us, but uh, we are soon having a review with the, with the organizations and the user before we release the GitHub code as public. So that will happen soon in a couple of months. Uh, by the time this presentation is over, uh, it should most probably be there. What can you get? You can get an open source drawn pen testing framework with readily available attack modules. And how can you contribute to it? Uh, once it is public, uh, you can add your own attack modules. You can uh, probably fix some of the problems that our modules have. Uh, maybe like there are, there are, for instance, the video freezing attack started as a video, you know, uh, man-the-middle attack for the video to grab the video without the controller uh, knowing it. 
uh, but it didn't work. We had to be satisfied with video, uh, you know, freezing. Uh, but it is well documented, so you can see what went wrong. You can add more things and make sure that you know we could grab the video and not just froze the video. So with that, I will stop my uh, short presentation. Uh, thank you for listening to me. Thank you, RSA, for giving me this opportunity to share this platform to this uh, you know, reputed panel and uh, audience. And uh, any questions, please feel free to email me or ask in the Slido. Uh, thank you.